All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are back in version 1.2, this time having a look at the Landertrons mod, which is being made by forum user Kerbis at Astra. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is automatically firing retro rockets to assist you in your landings. And oh man, do I love this mod, as it really should help me keep a lot of my Kerbals alive from any potentially deadly landings, or at least that's the hope. So let's jump right on into the VAB and have a look at the currently four parts that make this possible. But first, we'll need something to attach them to, so let's grab a Mark 1-2 command pod, and then in the search bar, we will put Xandertech, as that is the manufacturer for these four things, and then while zooming in, I'm gonna run you through just a quick basics of how this works. Essentially, you attach one of these four parts to your ship, and then when a certain landing criteria is met, which is based off of three different settings that you can change these to, which we'll talk more about in a little bit, they will automatically fire once that happens. And that hopefully should slow your ship down enough so that it can land safely. And again, there are three different modes to how it can help with your landing, and it just depends on which you set it to as to what it will do. So that's basically how they work, so let's actually look at the parts now. The first is the XTL-1 Landertron Retro Rocket, which is a solid rocket booster with a mere tiny 12 fuel and a maximum thrust of 120 kilonewtons. It does also have its own decoupler, which is quite handy, so if you do use this thing up, you can always drop it off the ship to lighten the load for your later launch back into space. And overall, it's a pretty lovely little thing. Let's just attach it right here to our command pod. And there we are, just a nice little retro rocket, which, when armed, will have a little nozzle pop out of this bit here so that, you know, it can actually fire. Unfortunately, I can't turn it on to show you that in here, but uh, yeah, you'll see it later. The next one we have is the L. 2 retro rocket again a solid rocket booster this one though with twice the fuel at 24 and uh and 240 kilonewtons of maximum thrust and again built-in decoupler it's just the big brother of the l1 and what this one will do when you arm it is this little casing will pop out and we'll have two little nozzles down here to fire off the engine a very nice little piece now the last one is the l2b retro rocket again a solid solid rocket booster, and it has all the same stats as the L2. The only difference is rather than being radially attached like these are, it goes on the bottom, and these little grates will open up, showing two nozzles pointing downward. And those are the three retro rockets that are available in this. But of course, we have a fourth part here, and what this is, is the LB Landertron box. And this, rather than being a solid rocket booster, actually takes over whatever engines are on your ship and currently active. If we place it on there, there we are, there's the part. And once this thing is armed, as I said, it will take over any active engines on the ship. Now again, it has to be an active engine so it won't turn on everything, just whatever engine you are currently using, and it will use that to actually pull off the Landertron procedure. And that is a wonderful tool, and I think actually probably my favorite part, as you can customize exactly how you want your landing to go thanks to this. And overall, uh, this mod does actually give you quite a bit of control with how you do use the Landertrons. It's not just a mech jeb sort of situation where it takes away full control of the landing from you. Instead, you're controlling the landing based on which of these you use and in what quantity. For instance, a Mark 1-2 command pod, we actually can land it safely with just the L1s here. It's just you know, it's not going to land safely if it's over 200 meters per second. So if you're falling towards Duna at like 220 meters per second, oh yeah, you're going to blow up. But that is assuming you're just using four of these. You use a couple of more, it might work out for you. Or, of course, you just use a few less of these, 
and you could be good to go. So it's up to you as to which of these you use and in what quantity so that you still have that control over things, and I quite enjoy that. Now on to the settings that you have. If we right click here, you can see we have something called mode, and we have three different modes which you can choose from. And this is one of my first pet peeves of this mod, and actually I think my only pet peeve, frankly is we can only change the mode in here in the VAB and in the space plane hangar. You cannot change it once you're out in the world, or at least I haven't seen a way to do it yet. So what you have to do is set your different landing modes here and then just hope you've planned for your mission correctly, uh, which, you know, hopefully shouldn't be too much of an issue as you probably should be planning your mission anyways by how you build your ship. But as for the three different modes we have, the first default mode is soft landing. And this is used if you're dropping a rover or a standard lander on a planet. What it's going to do is try and give you a soft landing. As you're descending towards the ground, it will fire off the retro rockets or whatever other engines you have attached with this one, of course, and try and slow you down so that it lands safely. Now, again, depending on how many and which ones of these you use will depend on how well that works out, but hopefully you should land on the planet nice and safe. The next mode is a short landing, and this is specifically useful for space planes. And the idea is, say, you take one of these, for instance, the L1s, and you flip it around so that the nozzle is facing towards the nose cone of the planet and during a short landing, once the plane actually lands on the ground, it will fire the retro rocket to try and land it short. So you land on as little runway as possible. So for those of you who like flying to uh, aircraft carriers you put in the ocean, or of course tr who like to try and land on top of the VAB, this is a great tool as it will help stop you on a dime. It's great and wonderful. Now the last setting is stay put, and I think this is one of my favorite because, okay, it's a big problem for me and I know every one of you out there watching has had this happen to you at least once. And that's bouncing. When you try and land a standard lander or rover, you may be coming in a bit too hot or on slightly angled terrain. And so you land and then you bounce, which could be very detrimental to your ship. But with the stay put mode, what it's going to do is fire any engines that are facing upward, like say this one right here, to help push your lander down into the ground and it'll stop those engines once it knows that your ship isn't gonna bounce anymore and i love that as well i tend to bounce a lot so let's actually look at these things in practice now i do have a uh, lander tron ship that i built earlier with all of these so we should be able to display it let me make sure that that's on the correct mode yes excellent and let's go out to the launch pad and take a look. Now what we're going to test first is the stay put mode and basically how that goes is this: these engines up here, these uh, twitch ones, are going to be controlled by our lander tron box. And of course, as I said, the engines need to be active so let's uh, throttle down and make them active engines. There we are. Now what you need to do to allow the Landertron box to take control of them is actually arm the device. Now you can either do this with this button or in the VAB you can actually put this to an action group if you so desire. And I actually put it on one so if I hit one, there we go. It's firing the engines to make sure we're secure and it's now stopped the engines now that the Landertron box knows that we aren't going anywhere. We are securely in the ground and now if I right click on it, you'll notice it's disarmed itself. So we could turn this on yet again, which is a very useful thing if you do tend to bounce your landers around from place to place on a planet. You can just keep on reusing this over and over so long as you have fuel. So it is a very, very useful tool. And I do enjoy it. And yeah, that's how those work. Now, let's take a look at the uh, XTL1s. Now, what we're going to do is actually get ourselves to about, oh, I don't know, maybe 200 feet up. I think that's what I was testing at last. 
Yes, there we go, lovely. And let's go and land from that 200 meter altitude and begin to drop. Now what we're gonna have to do is again, arm these by hitting spacebar for this group. And now that they're armed, there it goes. It automatically landed itself without any intervention from me. And I love that. Now again, with these, however many of them you have is gonna determine how well you can land. And with just these four L1s, I've actually been able to land this thing at about a max, I think I've mentioned it earlier, a maximum of about 200 meters per second. These, on the other hand, oh boy, they're a lot more powerful, twice as powerful, in fact, as the L1s. So I was able to get these up to about 3, 325 or so meters per second before it was no longer applicable for landing. Well, at least this little ship here, which, um, which was fun. So let's go up into the air for that. We'll actually go a little bit higher this time for this one since they are bigger engines. We'll go to land and drop. Well, let me actually double check. Yes, it is the right action group. So drop, and again, we have to arm it with spacebar or right clicking in here. And so let's do that. So they open up. I'm gonna turn off the UI and let's see it burn. There we go. And I apparently put it on slightly wonky because it did kind of twist as it landed, which is weird, but Meh, I can live with it. All right, and let's turn back on the UI and we'll go to the last engines, which of course, as I did mention in the VAB, are, uh, you know, not radially attached. They're on the bottom and it's the L2Bs. So once more, let us go up 500 meters and let's drop, activate, and I'm gonna get a better view here with these. So let's take that. Ooh, nice look over there, that's nice. And there we go, excellent. It automatically turned on the engines and landed us safe and sound. And that, that is the Landertron engines. Now that of course, as I said, isn't all we can do with it. We have, basically we've shown off the stay put mode the land soft mode so well we need to show off the short landing mode so let's actually go back to the space center and what I did was just quickly retrofit a plane with a couple of those uh, retro rockets and I made the one Ares 3A oh beautiful naming conventions there <laughs> where I attached four of the L1 rockets to it so what we just need to do is take off really quickly and then we'll land after we we uh, activate the engines. So let us take off. There we go. So the jet engines are activated. Let's get up a little bit of speed. There we go. We are in the air. So let's just uh, cut off the engines. We'll activate the retro rockets by hitting spacebar. And let's go and land this thing. And there we are. Once the wheels hit the ground, that could have been a better landing, but once the wheels hit the ground, the retro rockets automatically fired to slow this thing down. And what's fun about this, I probably should have pointed it out earlier, is the rockets, the retro rockets or any of the engines controlled by a Landertron box will only fire if that part will actually be useful. So if, say for instance, I had one of these L1s pointing up towards the sky, that one would not have turned on because it wouldn't have been useful for the short landing procedure. But since all of these are pointing forward, all four of them did go off to actually slow us down very quick. Now, if I would have landed a bit better, we wouldn't have lost our engine and some uh, flaps back here. But hey, that's... um. That should frankly be expected from my piloting at this point. And yeah, that is the Landertrons mod. I absolutely love this thing. The automatically firing retro rockets are a very, very useful tool. And the Landertron box gives you that extra bit of customization so that you can control exactly what automatically turns on and off. It's very cool, very handy, and will definitely save your Kerbal's lives. Provided, of course, you do it correctly. So, yeah, that is going to be it for this episode. If you'd like to download the mod for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description, as always. But I do, of course, hope you have enjoyed this one today, and that you do come back for the next, when we'll hopefully be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!